Hello my friends, my name is Darren from RC Scale Models and today we have another book review. Again, this one is from Sam Productions. This is on the Skyhawk. If you recently checked out my video on the Skyhawk build I did, that was the Top Gun aircraft from the movie. Uh, that was Viper's aircraft. This is the reference book I used for it. So we're going to take a look at this version now. This is number 30 of the uh, range. Again, we have the index uh, section. We have more categories, index type thing. We have great shots of the uh, early versions in black and white. We have a little bit of history on the aircraft. A history on the production run. Uh, these are the early test versions. Of the aircraft uh, it was first flown in the 2nd of 1954 June 1954 uh, uh, airfield Edward or Edward Air, Air, Air Base US so this is the early version there's the uh, I presume that's the uh, guy who invented the aircraft again this is more right up on the uh, Uh, training version and whatever Then then you go on to upgrade versions. This is the T4 in service in US Navy and Marine Corps Skyhawk, so this is the uh, US version So pretty much this is going to be from The same time era of, of the uh, Top Gun era from the movie era from the 1960s onwards, training aircraft, etc. So this goes on to the nice colour colour profiles. We have a nice one there in orange and white. These are more black and white shots. It is an aircraft carrier base plane. This one here looks really weird. It looks like someone's taken a crayon, like a uh, young kid has drawn over the walls and stuff, and just mental and crazy over it. it looks like it's been drawn on more nice decent shots one on the aircraft deck camouflage markings there's one intercepting a Russian bomber by looks of things Um, the, the aircraft was used also in, as you see, the Blue Angels display team in the 1970s from the uh, early 70s. We have more profile shots here of it landing on the aircraft carrier deck. So we have great schemes here, grey ones. We have the US Navy and the US Marine Corps Skyhawk at war now. So this is ones that are in war service, loaded up with weapons, attacking targets. And we do have write up in history on on those segments. There are great pictures in this. This marking of aircraft. I, this is the um, marking I could have done because I did have the kit for that. This is what I used um, from Hobby Boss to build my uh, version. But I could have done that kit marking because it was in the box. More profiles. We have this one in light grey with the orange, which stands out quite prominent. We have this one here. It looks like the old style early days of the uh, US tail marking at the back with the flag, the early days. So we have some nice colour profiles, this one is painted in some rainbow scheme from the Navy. More training ones, 
it is very um, reminiscent of the uh, T Hawk trainer that the British used back in the day. It looks very similar to that. This is a uh, uh, um, the same place that uh, uh, Top Gun was filmed, uh, which was. I believe Miramar was the airfield that it was filmed at. I believe this is Miramar. We have that nice rainbow scheme again. This one is pretty cool. We have a dark green one. We have ones that they use for training aircraft to mimic the Russians and um, North Korea and whatever. So we have some crazy camouflage schemes on this one blue one desert gray some good schemes in this book we have the desert camouflage schemes different variants green and yellow gray brown schemes blues grays again that looks like miramar as well Grey ones, camouflage, blue camouflage, blue camouflage, blue and grey camouflage, pretty cool. I do like it in blue. It tells you what type of T4 it is, so this is the uh, A4F, this one's the A4E, this one's the A4F, A4E, A4E. We have cat camouflage. This one here, number 55, I have the markings for that one if I wish to do that type of scheme, which is dark green with dark grey um, patterns all over it. We have a blue one, another desert one. Again, it's mimicking the Russian uh, enemy aircraft from the early days. These ones are... These ones are from Argentina. These ones are from a different country. This one is from can't pronounce that. We have Israeli ones, which is pulled pretty cool. They have a quite Striking scheme as well, I believe. I think, in my opinion, I think it looks pretty cool. Back to the US. This one here is from that country. I can't pronounce that. K way, K wit. Oh, I ain't gonna keep butchering it. An Australian one. I do know that. This is, these are Australian markings. Back to the US. New Zealand. Um, markings Brazil use them as well these are Brazilian ones this country uses it as well can't pronounce that and this country Singapore is that Indonesia, I believe that is. French use it as well. And then we go into colour profiles or colour art. Okay folks, where were we? Uh, the camera died, it ran out of battery, sorry about that. Uh, so I've got it all charged back up. Uh, so where were we? This was the colour profile art. We were on now for the... Uh, Aircraft, these are pretty cool. These are the navy grey ones. We have these took the top grey one with this one with the blue markings, blue tail, pretty cool. That one's alright. One with a red tail there. These are ones for the marines. We have this one up here with the red tail, marine. Basic grey ones. There's a tiger stripe one, pretty cool. 
We also have this one, a uh, camouflage type one. This one's camouflage. These are camouflage. There's a blue one, blue, blue and grey one. Pretty cool. There's your Argentina uh, markings one. Um, This one is from Australia. These two are can't be else. This one here is from Kuwait. Uh, this one's from the Royal Malaysian Air Force. This one is Brazilian Air Force. This one's New Zealand Air Force. We have this one, blue camouflage, can't pronounce that. And we have this one as well. Discovery Air Defence Service. Canadians, that one. So now we go on to um, people's kits that they've built and what kit they've used. This one here is from um manufacturers yes never heard of that company it's 170 seconds girl uh so again he's showing you how he's done his roughly um and the issues they come across he's built up a little bit of scratch building there um for the um Sensor radar bit that is scratch built a radar dome piece. Pretty cool weathering. Uh, he's had it with the nose cone off, which is here, which is scratch built. This nose radar piece, whatever it is, or it might be even instrument panels. I'm actually not sure. It doesn't actually show anything about the in internal, so I don't know where he's got that from. But that is still pretty good for scratch building. I like the weathering on this. Here's a guy who's built 148 scale Hasegawa one with the Argentina markings, which is pretty cool. It's um, like I say, it is a Navy aircraft as well. Got the uh, Navy anchors on it. The same aircraft again, the Hasegawa one. Uh, a little bit of weathering and how he's done it. Yeah, the uh, tail he's painted on, which should be simple enough to do. This one here is 148 scale from ESC, but it's actually interdairy. That, why haven't they put it down as that? I don't know. But again, I like this scheme. It's quite striking, in my opinion, with the blue. It stands right out against the grey. Pretty cool. Um, here's cockpit detail. Um, And how he's done it but he's got the blue underside as well which is pretty cool he sprayed his aircraft silver for some reason unless that is silver but it's a dirty gray silver this one's pretty cool striking this is 148 hasagawa it's got the um eagle nose not a nose art or whatever you want to call that that's pretty striking or it could be a falcon, I'm not sure, but that's in Brazilian markings. And there's the decal he's used. Pretty cool. There it is again, all finished up. Now there's one in uh, Israeli markings. Again, I think it's quite striking, the colour scheme the Israelis use. Nicely done. Plus, you can see how other people have done theirs, and you can take inspiration and put it into your build, how they've done the weathering. Even, sometimes you might even be doing the same scheme, so you can pretty much get a good rough idea how it's going to turn out. Pretty cool. This one's got all the flaps open. My one had the uh, 
air brakes open but I didn't have these flaps because they were all moulded in so I couldn't actually do it this is a Hasegawa one, 148 scale uh, pretty dark boring grey scheme, mine was a grey scheme to be fair but it wasn't all grey like that it was half and half um, this is a striking white one Typical uh, insignia white, probably uh, type aircraft. This is this also is known as a scooter, as a nickname. I have heard people mention that before. Even it mentions it here. Um, pretty striking, in my opinion. This one is loaded out with bombs. This one's quite different. This is uh, 148 as well. Hasegawa. This is the. Uh, AT4J strike so this is two seater some form of trainer as well that's a striking scheme on that box but number 700 is pretty striking it shows you how he's done his camouflage a lot of work there is a lot of masking up but once it's done it's, it's it does come out nicely when you when you do it we have this one a TV scooter. This is 148. This is a hobby boss kit. This hobby boss kit here. This one here. The guy I used this is exactly the same kit that I used for mine. The only uh, problem I come across with these intakes, but the rest of the kit went together really nicely. He's using the uh, spine on his version, which houses radar equipment and stuff in, in the spine. But I used mine without the spine, so mine looked like this clean. There's that other kit from uh, Hobby Boss with that scheme I mentioned at earlier. This is 148. This is pretty much the same kit as this one, but this this one's DE and this one's DF. In slight, there's a slight differences in between them. I couldn't actually tell what the differences are. How he how he done his. That's the Top Gun Fight Trainer School one. He's got the Top Gun logo on the tail there. The uh, Top Gun School. This one here is 172nd. Fujimi kit. Never heard of that manufacturer before. The Black Sheep Bomber. And now we go around on the walk around. Again, this aircraft. Again, it's left outside, so the weathering is going to be quite heavy. But you get the intakes, landing gear, uh, landing gear door. It's got this red trim. I don't know what the red trim means. I think it could be um, when it's on the aircraft carrier. It's for the uh, people that are doing the cruise, I think, so they don't bang their head and they can visualise parts. It's, I'm not 100% sure on that. If you do know, comment down in the comments down below what the red access panels mean on the uh, Navy aircraft. Close up of the uh, number, number, there's the part of the uh, step. That would be heavily weathered. You can see it's been painted multiple times the way it's worn out. This is the uh, aerial, not sorry, not aerial, this is the refueling probe. Nice shots of the undercarriage landing gear. So it's pretty much all one colour. And then I think the easiest way of mimicking that is this paint it is the, all the one colour it requires and then just use a dark wash and you should pretty much get the same kind of effect. Again there's the red, red accent accent. This one is much cleaner. This one's inside a uh, museum, so this is gonna again the weathering shouldn't be too heavy on this one i'm not sure what country that one form though no. i'm sorry there it is the brazilian navy my bad but this one is a uh, pretty cool the intakes it's got the uh cover for the uh engine close up with the uh fuel the training missile which is blue i put training missiles on mine and also i put on a red orange probe which was something to do with dog fighting um to simulate uh, other aircraft and whatever 
I did go into it on the uh, video a little bit. This one, a laddie gear is a little bit different. This is a little bit more cleaner. To mimic this, different colours will take a little bit more work, but it's pretty cool. This one hasn't got any red accents because um, maybe because it doesn't get used anymore and it's different country, different walls. There's that flap on the front that pops out. I think that's to do with uh, slowing the aircraft down. A cannon, refueling probe. This one's nice and clean. Another aircraft. This one's really clean as well. This one's inside the museum. Again, it's got the red accent pieces. This is an American one. This one's left outside. This one's highly weathered. Red accent panels highly weathered around the front this has got some radar dome at the front this is all weathered and, and grimy on the bottom again to mimic that easy having it all the one color and using a black wash would simply bring that out now we have the aircraft at weapons at war or aircraft with weapons bombs missiles guided bombs by lots of things those are bombs, bombs, bombs. What we have here, these are variants of the aircraft. So we have A4 Skyhawk, different types. This is more types, and the countries that use them Australia, Brazil, India, Israelis, the United States Navy. Kiwi, never heard of that, New Zealand. So there's a uh, New Zealand one again. These are more markings, um, types. This one's from the US Navy type. This is the US Marine Corps type, US Navy Reserve. So we have, that's the striking scheme again. These are Kiwi ones. Austra Kiwi, it'd be Australia, wouldn't it? No, New Zealand. Isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I have heard Kiwi before, being in Australia or some sort, or New Zealand. I'm not 100% sure on that. Again, we have all the drawings. Again, I wouldn't really use trust these drawings too much. It's nice they give you in the book a little bit of landing tactics. And uh, landing tactics on the aircraft carrier. Cockpit uh, instrument panels, drawings, pilot seat, that is to do with injection, drawings of the cockpit, so yeah, different variants this one, and to these ones. And then we have uh, variants again, and it, again it tells you the, the different changes between the variants, which is okay, like it is before. We have the back of the book. Now we are on to decals for kits. Again, the time of this book being printed, this is what was available. This. Uh, set of decals here. I have this. This is what I got my reference markings out of for doing the uh, Top Gun one. I am looking for the second set, but it's really hard to find at the moment. Someone out there has got it, and they probably will be willing to give it up if I can find it because I do want it. So, kits are available 172nd for from Airfix through me. Jimmy did the 172nd, Hasegawa did 172nd and 148. Hasegawa did a 132 scale as well in the E and the F. Hobby Boss did a 148 and a 172nd. Interlary did a 148 and a 72nd. Trumpet Art did 132 scale only. Decal options from other manufacturers. More kits available. Microscale did a 172nd and 148. 
and a one for and one thirty two. Um, Wild Wind Avians one forty eight one four four scale one seventy second. We have accessories. In other words, fellow and stuff probably. What they mean by that? So Atlas did uh, accessories one forty eight one seventy second one seventy uh, one one thirty second as well. Uh, Edward do the one uh, one thirty two scale stuff one forty eight. Boost do stuff one seventy second one forty eight. It only tells you what aircraft it's for, but it doesn't actually tell you what the actual product is. If it's like engines, seats, whatever, it doesn't actually tell you. It gives you the code, so you're going to have to look it up, unfortunately. You have to go do your research for it. Again, we've got more drawings. And some more, a uh, little bit of index and pictures. That's a nice shot at night time. So there you are, folks. Another kit. Sorry, another, another uh, book on the Skyhawk, this one is. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you later.